a young woman walking, the face, how she gleams, with an unending enthusiasm for life, how fresh shingles of skin are perfectly fitted without any binding concoctions, no tile is sagging loose, no place is cracked, and her beacons of wonderment are not blanketed by the mists of age. She sees clearly without any wizened prejudices. The candlelight of truth burns bright through her stained glass. An impediment is not yet present. How long will it thus remain? What pinch and peck of the dust of decades could turn away the tide of ceaseless joys, enduring hope, and unblemished pride? One day the ivory gates will be tarnished, her smile diminished. The red rug of recent speech will roll up indefinitely. The old and stubborn will silence her words. Should be forced not to be curious, but conform. And her wondrous heart that has a deluge of vitality and emotions without limits that today races onward with unparalleled vigor will be slowed with careful hands, grinding her to a stop. She has a neck so gaunt and straight that holds her crowned head toward heaven, defiant to view the world with dauntless precision. The steps of the innocent slide along with regal grace, she that glides along as if on a pond, a queen beauty, sidewalk swan. But the toil of many wearisome mind stones will wear her head low, and a steady walk will traverse to a meandering shuffle. When her life has lost its compass, it will fade with the gradual precision of the ticking of a timepiece, sadistic it will come upon her, blow by blow, as the sorrows and scars of a lifetime start to show. How will she do it, keep it all intact? Is it even possible for her to escape it? For not a soul who has lived or lives still can have it all as they like. There will always be another woman that will despise her faith in life's possibilities, hope's warming light, who will try to crush her out of spite, to eradicate their own failures and lost dreams. There will be men who will toil with her heart and body, either because she is merely a brief adventure, or to take her treasure for granted. Either way, they will desert her in the end, for another feminine flower blowing fragrance in the wind. How fickle the little boy be, that pollinates indiscriminately the world with the seed. A hive's equal of them will jostle her before her life is through, with life's many trials and tribulations. Bitter Betty might well be her name. The salt of life's problems will enter the wounds of her heart, and burn up her goodness in the flame. Must this indeed be the way of things? Is it her fate to watch her glories being slowly consumed until death's inevitable date? No, I think not, men. For we know what to do. For if all the evils that will be done under her serve as the acid eating away her strength, so shall we, as good men, act as the base, bolstering her faith, preserving her good cheer, whether we are her father, brother, son, or one true love. We must do what we can, so she may retain her dreams that reach far above the limits of the horizon. In a state untainted, she would do the same for us. We must protect her spirit not because she is weak, rather to preserve her great strength. She is still succulent in flavor, with every glance, word and deed. She is sharp and direct, an acquired taste. Let's savor her presence in our lives, and not let our bounties go to waste. From April 2001, for Kay.